What's up guys, it's Kaze here. So, it's 2024 and it's been a historic month for WWE. Thing is, it's only January guys and so much has happened. So, I wanted to talk about pretty much everything that's been going on. Like, the WWE moving forward will never be the same again. And it's only January guys. This is literally my first month ever covering wrestling and it has been historic it's been heartbreaking it's been kind of disgusting it's just been wrestling before i start i want to say huge shout out to one of my subs adam khan he suggested that i show more videos in my videos more than like photos and i gotta say i love the quality after doing it so huge shout out to him and anybody else you know like sub leave a suggestion on how you think i can improve the video quality i'm always reading the comments i'm down to improve it's a journey for us all Okay, so I want to start with something that didn't necessarily happen this January, but it did happen towards the end of 2023, and we are seeing the effects in January, and that's no more Kevin Dunn. Now, me personally, and I know a lot of fans as well, I'm not a fan of Kevin Dunn's camera work. It's just not here to bag on him too much. I'm just really stating I'm not a fan of his camera work for the most part. We actually have people who've been working in NXT back in the black and gold era. Yeah, they're working on the main roster now and like the live tapings and things of that nature. So definitely shout out to them. I've seen just a lot of improvement. I've seen a lot of better camera work and a lot of new angles as well. Like when I was watching the Royal Rumble, they were doing all types of cinematic shots. Like there was one from the rafters that kind of led down into the ring. And also when they were like, filming Roman in his skybox like that was pretty cool The Rock returns to call out Roman Reigns, which is already mind blowing in itself. Like I know that I had everyone, including myself, in a frenzy about what's gonna happen with Cody's story and who's facing Roman at WrestleMania. So this caused all types of confusion, which is good. Like we shouldn't know four months out what the main event of WrestleMania is gonna be. Like it's so much time to build and really tell a complete story that it's no use of letting us know right now anyway. Okay, next I want to get into Tony Khan's Twitter rant about Jinder Mahal and just WWE booking in general. Now, the bickering and the shots going back and forth between these two companies, for me at least, getting a little old. Like, I feel like both companies at this point have acknowledged each other. Now let's just focus on putting on the best product we can on both shows. I don't want to see AEW fail. I know last year they had a bit of a rough year, but... It's nothing they can't come back from. They have enough talent to do so. They really just need to lock in and focus on themselves and how they're going to move. For those of you who don't know, I guess Tony Khan was upset because WWE booked Jinder Mahal versus Seth Rollins, a completely random match, and it's for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now, Tony has been getting a lot of flack recently because of his random booking himself and he took this time to call WWE out for their random booking. Here's the thing. We are used to years and years and years of them just throwing on random matches. Tony, you have the opportunity to be different. Just do so. Don't focus on them. Just be different. And in my opinion, this was WCW's problem. This was TNA's problem where they just could not avoid the big elephant in the room. That is WWE every major angle they had had to reference wwe every superstar they had had to reference wwe like they inevitably referenced wwe so much they became a carbon copy of wwe and not even one of those cool carbon copies like white vision it's more so like when stewie made those clones of him and brian and they started to fall apart so this led to tony khan just being clowned all over twitter there are reports that even some people on the roster would prefer someone just take the phone away from him i've seen people call him twitter fingers tony so let's maybe just get him off that phone guys let's just i, I guess take it away take it away 
So this leads me to the next crazy thing that happened this month. With all the drama and negativity surrounding this match, something was bound to happen. So Seth Rollins gets injured against Jinder Mahal in his championship match, and he's gonna be out up until WrestleMania. Man, when I heard this, I was so sad for Seth just because he's never gone into WrestleMania as the champion. He's always either trying to win it or he's got like a mid card match or something of that nature. He's never been like the champ going into that pay-per-view. And I know that meant a lot to him this year. So hopefully he's able to bounce back from this and make it to WrestleMania without any limitations. And he can actually like really go in the ring. It's looking like he should be good to go. Like I said, I'm just a little worried about any limitations he may have in the match. Like it may have to be a shorter match just to keep him off the knee. Hopefully not though. Hopefully he's just fully clear to go. There have been WrestleManias before where he's tore his knee like right before the event and he has had to like vigorously rehab just to be able to make the match. But he's done it. He's definitely done it. So I have no doubt in my mind he can do it again. I'm just hoping again, no limitations, like he can really just go. So also this month, we got some WWE 2K24 news. We got the cover star or cover stars, as I should say. We've got confirmation of 40 years of WrestleMania. This means we're going to get all those arenas. And if you're like me, I love all the WrestleMania arenas, to be honest. There's not one that I've really been like, oh, this is kind of garbage. Now, there are some that people hate on. There are some that I don't like as much as others. But for the most part, they always do it big for WrestleMania. So to have 40 of them bad boys, I'm I'm definitely down so another thing they're including a lot more match types and if I'm being honest them taking away a lot of match types kind of ran me away from the franchise just because it seemed like they were doing the same thing they were doing in NBA 2k where they're taking features away and then slowly adding them on as if these are brand new features so I'm not too big a fan of when any video game company does that, especially 2K who has a history of doing it. But if we're getting special guest referee and we're getting buried alive matches, I'm okay with it, but I will be keeping my eye on 2K. Now they're saying this is gonna be the greatest roster ever. And they say this every single year, but with 40 years of WrestleMania, I'm sure it will be a pretty big roster. My thing is though, a lot of people, you know, throughout the history of WrestleMania are also signed with AEW so I'm not sure how many people will be included and how many they're gonna just replace with other people completely or maybe they just focus on different matches entirely from Wrestlemania like every Wrestlemania has at least two classics on it anyway so hopefully without leaving out too much history we're able to still get a pretty comprehensive history of wrestlemania but yeah they're saying there's gonna be ambulance matches there's gonna be a gauntlet match like i said the casket match multiple superstar support for backstage brawls like this is sounding pretty interesting so i'm definitely gonna review this for you guys and let you know before you get caught in the 2k trap i got you guys so The Rock returned to Monday Night Raw and later in the same month, he joins the WWE TKO board of directors. Now this is big for so many reasons and it leaves a lot of questions on the table such as what about The Rock's acting career? What about his ownership of the XFL? Like are these ventures he's, I don't wanna say put to the side, The Rock's very capable of doing all these at once, but these are a lot of things that require a ton of time so just how much time will he be putting to each is my question but also he was granted ownership of the name the rock this is huge because he's already a huge megastar all over the world now he has a catchy nickname that we already know him by to put on whatever he wants to sell this is a struggle for a lot of superstars to be honest like john cena doesn't even own his own name ryback had to change his name to ryan ryback in order to actually be able to call himself ryback this was a huge mega move for the rock and definitely shout out to him so this led to the next announcement that wwe will be moving to netflix in 2025 and i still don't really know how i feel about this i'm not the biggest fan of netflix as a streaming service for a multitude of reasons but it is nice to see that they are evolving to include sports and i'm just interested to see how it's going to play out just how accessible it's going to be how fluent it's going to be like it's on the peacock app now and i don't know about you guys i experience 
some lag in a few places so hopefully like these streaming issues could be resolved by then or at least just on a whole new format maybe they just don't even have that issue but something's got to be done so it's a 10 year five billion dollar contract which is a huge commitment on both sides and we'll see how this plays out guys i'm hoping for the best i'm not the most excited about it i'm more so intrigued than i would say excited but we'll see how it goes The Vince McMahon court documents and allegations. Now, it's no secret to anybody that Vince McMahon is an absolute disgusting human being. And this is before we knew anything about these documents. We just knew he was not the best human being. Now, legally, I have to tread lightly and state these are indeed allegations. And until everything is final within court and settled in court, I can't really give you too much of my opinion. I just know my opinion of him before all of this was not very high to begin with. So I'm just hoping that the victim gets justice. I'm glad his reign of terror is finally over and I just don't think there's any room for someone capable of these actions if they are true. So in light of these court documents coming out and the allegations coming to light, Vince McMahon resigns from the board of directors EKO, and he is no longer involved with the company whatsoever. And this is a good thing for everyone involved. Like no one needs to feel uncomfortable when they show up to work like it's best to just rid him of what they're doing moving forward because there's no place for him to be there anyway brock lesnar is also tied up in this and it's just it's a big mess i don't condone anything he's been allegedly involved in as well when asked about it during the royal rumble press conference after the show triple h kind of had a no response to all of this and that just wasn't a good look I'm not saying he's wrapped into any of this as well, but it's just not a good look for someone trying to move forward. As he says, not the best way to move forward. You need to acknowledge what has happened and then move forward. But to just brush it off the way he did, not the best look. And I'm a huge fan of Triple H just as a booker, as a wrestler, even as a spokesperson. Just this decision to not acknowledge that and continue to move forward, not a good look. And even Cody Rhodes, who went on before Triple H, had a much better and solid response. And he made it more so about the current WWE roster being a family and they all have each other's backs. They hold each other accountable. And it's he didn't say too much. He didn't reveal too much, but he, he gave an answer. He acknowledged the situation and he acknowledged what the present is and what they want to do in the future. That's all we were looking for from Triple H. So him not saying anything kind of makes him look like he wants to cover it up or just move forward. So it, it just doesn't make him look the best right now, you know? especially with so many eyes on him. He could have said something and just kept it moving. I understand that's your father-in-law, but he did some pretty heinous things. So acknowledge that. So I want to move back to the in-ring action for just a bit. And we got Cody Rhodes and Bailey winning the Royal Rumble. No one has won back-to-back -back Rumbles in 26 years. And Cody Rhodes just did that. So that is incredible it also confirms that the story will continue and we might get to see cody in that story the right way so also at this royal rumble we have cm punk tearing his tricep so for a standard tear it's about four to six months out of action now as a huge cm punk fan this is absolutely devastating like i could not wait to see him at wrestlemania it seemed to me he was finally going to get that main event as well so this just it's a big bummer i saw at some point in the match he was like grabbing at his arm and he was telling a referee to come check it out and then another referee came and he was like nodding his head and pointing at his arm so it's just a huge bummer i was hoping that nothing would have come out of it or maybe he got a stinger or something which would have probably kept him out for about a week but i'm sure they have a replacement ready to go like gunther's probably gonna end up taking punk spot which isn't a bad thing at all just me personally i would have rather see punk i'm a chicago native myself so you know just seeing anybody from chicago in a position that he's in where he's getting so much love i just it warms my heart i love to see it so to see that he's not gonna be able to make it i'm a little bummed out but the show must go on so yeah guys this month has been absolutely ridiculous like like i said this is my 
first month covering wrestling and I feel like I've just been thrown in the deep end. But no, it's been a fun time. I'm having fun connecting with you guys. I'm glad I could get on here and just be myself really and talk about things that I like. It's, it's a fun time and I really appreciate you guys for keeping me going as well. So please hit that like button, subscribe, comment anything that you want me to talk about or just any more news that came out this month that I maybe missed. This has definitely been one for the books and I can't wait to see what the rest of this year brings. So that's pretty much it guys. Make sure you put that seatbelt on and until next time, keep it cosy.